What's up, Jammers? We're back with another video. And before we get started, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications so you can be notified. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get started, we want to do a new segment called What Are You Jamming To? So I asked the question this week, what are y'all be jamming to? What you listening to? Me? I'm like... It's either Pop Smoke or 50. That's what I'm listening to. <laughs> it's literally those two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say Pop old, y'all. So I've been jamming to uh, Prince's Under the Cherry Moon album over and over and over again. I don't know. See, I don't even know that one. You gotta listen to it. Yeah, okay. Very <laughs> good. Who's the Prince? Prince's Under the Cherry Moon. Yo, we're gonna get so <laughs> much hate for that shit. <laughs> By the way, I'm ne I don't listen to, I met him, but I don't listen to Prince music. Met Prince? Yeah, I met him. I, was on, I met him on the New Girl uh, on set when I was on that Super Bowl episode. Yeah. I would say this week, I've been taking it, not old school, because people say it was like early 2000s. So like, okay. I've listened to like Bobby Valentino, so damn, <laughs> Little Mr. Officer by Lil Wayne. Oh, okay. <laughs> Officer, uh... They used to be my shit. Well, that is what we're jamming to this week. Please leave a comment. Let us know what have you been jamming to. Feel free to listen to what we listen to. <laughs> uh, as you can see, we have someone new here. You probably didn't even notice him. He fits right in with us. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is Eric Stone, yeah. also known as Eric Fry Stone on all social media platforms. Mm -hmm. He is a social media activist. He has a nonprofit organization. An up and coming author. Come on, we love some writers up in here. Boom. Yes. <laughs> but, um, I'm going to go ahead and just open the floor and like, just kind of tell the people who you are. Yeah, so basically, I, as you said, I'm a social activist and everything like that. And I started like two, two and a half years ago. I was really on it, but like not making content because I didn't want to be the guy on the camera. Um, I got turned off from Hollywood from what goes on behind the scenes, right? So I was just like, this thing for me. And... Um, then I built a media company called Testify to Hip Hop. Did that for like five years. It was very successful. And then I was just like, I'm not, I'm not into it. Like I'm not like, like it's not giving me the same energy anymore. And all my friends were like, Hey, you need to be doing like speaking on these issues because they like my perspective. And it was like from everybody from like black, white, Latino, it didn't matter. And I was like, but I'm not that guy. And I said, screw it. So I posted on Facebook, blew up, right? And then my friend was like, or then I started a nonprofit because of that called Defiance. And then all these black women reached out to me and one Latina that I knew who was a roommate with me in New York. And they're like, we want to be a part of this. Cause I put it out that I was like, who, anybody who's in government or wants to be a part of this or just wants to get involved, hit me up. And these amazing women hit me up. Honestly, if it wasn't for them, I would be a fucking mess. <laughs> like, like keeping it all hundred, right? So like, so now we're doing that, and then they were like, do TikToks, right? And I'm like, okay, I can do TikToks, right? Blew up, and I'm averaging like a hundred thousand followers a month, right? I've been doing it for three months, and it's just, it's just now I'm gonna be. You know what? We'll say that. You, you already know. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Y'all so, yeah. see. Yeah. Saying. Yeah. Basically. You'll see. You'll so see. that's that's the summary mm -hmm. of what I've done. So that's yeah. So now um, you mentioned this. Um, I just kind of want to ask a quick question before we jump on. Okay. Testify to hip hop. What's that? What was that? So it started as when I got out of acting and I was like, I want to do like music, like music industry, right? And I can't sing, right? right? I don't know if you want to hear that, but it's not good, right? Okay. So. I can, I think I can, <laughs> but I bet you there's a shit ton of people who don't think I can. So, <clears throat> so I put out, a, I did put out two songs. One was like an Amy Winehouse remix and her mom retweeted it. Mm -hmm. And then I did another one uh, with Rapid Forte, who was on Tupac's song, Only God Can Judge Me. That one I was trying to like make a popular song. I wasn't trying to like make a song that I wanted to do. I was trying to make, because I was just trying to build an audience. That's something like, like right. the song wasn't that good. So I was like, I wasn't trying no better. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I love that song. Put me in the studio. That's all I'm saying. No, I get it. <laughs> so, um, so what Testified to Hip Hop was, it started out as EBS rap battles, right? Okay. So what I did was, I was like, I'm 
got evicted, lost my apartment, my car got stolen. I was like living in Hollywood and I was just like, what the fuck am I gonna do? So I was like, I'm gonna do a music festival in Oklahoma and just see what happens. Next thing you know, I got like this YouTube star performing. I got, um, even though she didn't perform in the end, but uh, whatever, right? She was right? on the, you know, she was on the roster. She was on the roster. Um, and the people all over the world from New York to Atlanta to Florida to California to Washington, like everybody just came to this middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. Right. And we had this rap battle and live performance for underground artists. And it was amazing. And 2014, 2013, somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a minute, right? And, uh, you know, the hairline going a little back, but, you know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and then, then it became a media company. So I rebranded it, changed the name, and next thing you know, I was posting like a blog, right? Mm -hmm. Where I was posting celebrity interviews and this and that, mostly Tupac, like, like behind the scene, or like Tupac old interviews. That took it off because that's what I was obsessed with, right? So 18 hours a day, I was living in my car, uh, going to the local library and just on Facebook 18 hours a day posting this shit. Mm -hmm. and, and then by 2018, I started making money doing it and giving artists, underground artists a platform to get famous from and I blew some artists up where they got like touring deals now and record deals. And not all of them got blown up, like the majority didn't, but like there were a handful that did. And then I was making a bunch of money and and then I was just like, I'm not feeling it. So, uh, I'm not feeling it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. On my bracket level, I don't know like to have half money to like not have it on my bracket, but not like, yeah. Yeah. And my bunch of money is like there's levels to my bunch yeah. of money was like I made like a quarter million in like <laughs> two and a half, two years, right? Which was like a shit ton of money for me, right? Because I'm living in my car. Right? Yeah. But I also like didn't spend it wisely either. So yeah, you know I would have been like, yeah, we learned from our mistakes. So uh -huh. either way it goes, it's benefited you. Yeah, definitely did. Yeah. Definitely did. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Plus, it gave me the expertise and like social media and like how to yeah. build a following. So, right. yeah. So, where are you? Hit this accent. Uh, where are you from? <laughs> where are you from? <laughs> so, <laughs> this, this yeah, is a question I get a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, but born. Okay, go. I'm from the south. Born at least from the south. Not like a southern twang with a. Yeah, like, I'll give you that. With a upper north. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to say you from like Oklahoma, moved around, kind of got your accent all over mixed together. Yeah. I'm going to also say I rented on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say I rented on you. When she first showed me your videos, uh, I was like, oh, okay. he's getting it. Called Southern, but they're not part of the South, yeah. right? But they ain't the Midwest either, so we kind of right. it's like weird, right? In between. So I was born there, but then always moved, mm -hmm. right? So I never like really had a stable home, and then the longest places I lived was LA for seven years and New York for five, and I'm currently in New York, so I'm hoping to make that 10, 20, 30 years right. in New York. So Ooh. yeah, so it's it's kind of like a mix of everything, but. I definitely like the New York style way better because mm -hmm. LA was like, I don't want to say pussy boy, but like, <laughs> you were able to be yourself. Yeah, I was able to be myself in New York and at LA you had to put on this like, you know, like the work boys. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so what we call that is code switching. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, people of the palm complexion are able to code switch too. Y'all didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have known? The colonizers can do that too. <laughs> um, and it's all up here. Know it's all love and it's all jokes. So, mm. um, we just can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> With that being said, I uh -huh. think it is time to get into our first question. Because it honestly segues 
Very well. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. I had my first lesson prepared. Oh, and nice. um, so when she told me about the interview, mm-hmm. I was like, send me this Instagram. You know, like, mm-hmm. I got to take the look for this Instagram because I don't oh, want no. to talk because I'm an old woman. Yeah. So <laughs> with that being said, um, I went. Look all the way through to oh, the bottom. Oh, good, cool, yeah, great. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be good <laughs> just, right here. Yeah, just to kind of see the transition in your mm, life because I, like I feel that. like nobody really looks at that. Yeah, they look at who you are now, but they yep. don't look at who you were before yep. to see the change. So, Absolutely. with that being said, I noticed that <laughs> when the George Floyd um, kind of movement started, mm-hmm. that's when. Eric Brownstone said, I'm going to say something. Yeah. Um, I, I think I was doing it on Facebook like maybe a couple months right before that, uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. Maybe like three to six months, probably like three to four. Mm-hmm. But the George Floyd thing really just like, no, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, when, okay, if you could give us like kind of a timeline, mm-hmm. when, where were you? Why did you choose to finally, because I know you said you, you talked about this amongst mm-hmm. your friends and they were like, dude, you should go for it. You're like, nah. Yeah. What was that like? What was that like, light bulb moment for you? It was like, so I was doing really good at this point. Mm-hmm. I had my dream. So I went from living in a uh, 15 bunk bed place in Journal Square in New Jersey, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. To finally, after two years, getting my dream apartment in Manhattan and I had everything I worked for everything I dreamt about having money the dream apartment I had a girl for eight, 11 months and then that ended right like I had everything that I wanted and once that really happened I said nothing all this, this is stupid like I don't care about this stuff like I don't care about none of it and and I'm tired I've been tired Right, I've seen my uh, friends of color, like whether you're black, Latina, it didn't matter, being treated completely different. And I would always talk to them about it. And I would point out like certain things uh, that w- I would point out like the white privilege, mm-hmm. that like I could do things and they couldn't. And we, I would point it out, they're like, you noticed that? And I was like, yeah, I noticed it. And they were, they were mind blown by it. But then I was just like, nah, it's, it's if, if nobody gonna do something, in the white community, I'm gonna fucking do something right. because it's, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you could pretty much stand and die with any heel, right? Mm-hmm. So the black person, it was kind of like, why is black, mm-hmm. right? Like uh, you could have Latino, Native American, uh, you know, just any like kids, that yeah. issue, but it's like, oh, yeah. why, why <laughs> black? Yeah, that's that's my question. <laughs> nah, it, it's a good question because with. Asians can be accepted in white communities, mm-hmm. right? Latinos, depending on your accent, if you've got an American accent or a thick Latino accent, mm-hmm. or if you're light skinned, you can be accepted in white communities. Mm-hmm. There is zero acceptance for dark skin. Zero. Mm-hmm. And now there's a front acceptance, mm-hmm. right? If you put on the right wig mm-hmm. and you have the right accent if you will like the white accent i like to call it right mm-hmm. where you don't talk how you want to talk you talk like like i was saying your work voice that's where you're accepted outside of that environment you're not accepted unless you believe and think the way they think and do what they do and that's why i was like if you're going to do something you got to speak for everybody and now that does include the light skins that includes the latinos because they go through the bullshit too but you got to get to the root of the problem and we all come from Africa anyway, so that's oh, the damn room. Come room. on. Uh, <laughs> for the camera, for everything. <laughs> if you know me, you know that that statement just that goes a long way. Mm. So we're just, we're gonna, that's yeah. that on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so mm. that's a really great answer to that question. Yeah. I know we wanted to bring up background. Do we want to say that? Uh, you know, let's say a little bit. So it's like background, like so you're, you're, you're you're doing all this, right? It's twenty mm. what eighteen? No, twenty twenty ish. Uh, 
Yeah, I would say, yeah, 2020 ish. Right, so you're getting started, you're on Facebook, you're blowing up, you're mid not Yeah, yeah. mid pandemic. What is your family and friend saying? What are your family? Uh, that's like. Not your black. <laughs> yeah. they, they, they love it but like um my family is a little mixed on it mm -hmm. because like i said so my dad went to all black high school mm -hmm. my dad did black girls when he was like growing up right and his father was a cop mm -hmm. right so but i sadly didn't get to meet him because he um passed away when my dad was 18 right, right. so when when I talked to these issues, my dad knew I've been on this, right? On my mom's side, and I don't know everybody on my dad's side, right? So I don't know how they feel about it, but they do follow me. My mom's side, it became very toxic relationship, especially after Trump. Like the Trump kind of started it, and this was like the final touches, mm -hmm. right? And I, I don't want to call a specific person out in yeah, the family, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 right? But they, because I have conversations with them, mm -hmm. right? They don't feel like they're racist mm -hmm. because they have black friends and everything like that, right? I know, I know, I know, <laughs> <laughs> right? right? But they don't see the white privilege, they don't see the undertone racism, the mm -hmm. microaggressions, they don't see it. And the reason why, and I tell people this, the reason why I don't get mad at them, okay, mm -hmm. is because if I got mad at them and I got mad at any other white person who thought this way, then I'd be hypocritical at my previous self because I used to think the same way, right? Because I grew up in that environment, right. right? Now, where I do draw the line and where I will get mad and go, you, right, is when you don't change, you don't make that effort, you get the full education. So for example, if I get a lot of hate comments on social media from the okay. white community, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, I used to be like, well, if you're gonna give me fuck you energy, can I curse? Is that yeah. okay? Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. Right. Oh yeah, you can bleep it out. They, right. not, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is you and this is you with filters. So all right, all right, all right, cool, cool, cool. So, if you're going to give me fuck you energy, I'm going to give you fucking you energy back, right? Mm -hmm. Then I learned it's not good to do that because you're just basically lighting the fire more for them to believe the way they think, right? That's all you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're like, it's like telling me I can't step on the grass. Mm -hmm. All I want to do is step on the grass now, mm -hmm. right? So then I would give them, well, I love you too, and give them a little kissy, kissy face, right? Mm -hmm. And I get two responses, either you gay, right, <laughs> <laughs> which I didn't get, mm -hmm. or two, um, you know what, man, sorry, I just lost my job, my boss yelled at me, I was having a bad day, and we get in this long one-hour conversation in a DM of talking about these issues and finding mutual ground, mm -hmm. right? So I treat it like that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I used to be pro-competitor uh, pro flag. I used to be pro um uh, like like anti-immigration. I used to be fucking like, oh yeah, white people can say the N word, who fucking cares? Yeah. Right, mentality. Yeah. That's when I got some flavor and some spice mm -hmm. in me when I traveled, <laughs> right? For lack of a better term. And, and, and I realized, oh, everything I was taught was a lie, mm -hmm. right? So my family's kind of divided on these issues, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I know I got long winded answers. No, 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 you're fine. So, you, uh, you hit up some things that I also want to bring up. For example, the um, I watched TikTok and uh, it was one that took out to me in particular. Mm -hmm. And you said, "This is that bullshit I'm talking about." <laughs> 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 Hold on, <laughs> like you got mad. I was yeah. like, "What's well, going on?" Because again, if uh -huh. I'm, I'm an educator, right? Uh -huh. well, they know I'm going to be always teaching teach for three years. I didn't know that. Yeah, and uh -huh. I was, I was, I'm certified. certified Hey, okay. our teachers more, <laughs> Come man. On. Come on. That's what's working there right now. Uh. <laughs> no, no, no. So I am an educator. I think uh. just, regardless of school, I think just my natural being, I like to educate if I know something. Okay. So the way that I do it, though, is going to be at level. I said that I was like, you have to educate someone. If, like you, you literally said, like, if I'm screaming at you, you're automatically going to put a wall up and just be like, forget what you're talking about. Yep. 
right? So when I met you, just to, you know, y'all know, I met this man like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and I met him today. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> quick this up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're learning him as y'all like me. They hustling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so going from, I said y'all was a podcast, a podcast voice, things mm-hmm. like that. Um, how you speaking now is very much so like I can receive whatever you're saying. Mm. So when I see that, I was like, whoa. I was like, we have a lot of backlash. I'm like, this that boom camera I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like it's hard? Because as a person, I don't even really know. Like, I, I, had my, I said to my sister, and she was like, whoa. Like, she couldn't really read it because it seemed so harsh. So she was like, hey, I, don't, I don't know. So we had to like, go back yeah. and really look. So, like, in person, He's not this harsh. The way no. he's saying is easy to receive. And I'm like, do you feel like it makes a difference if you were just to sit and say exactly how you said right now versus like, it's that boo shit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, like, does that make it, do you feel like people, it, like, is it more like you're, you're so, is, is it more cool, like a, a place of passion? Because I'm like passionate. I get mm-hmm. louder, I get angrier. Yep. Uh, I, that's a good question. Of, Here's why, right? I grew up with white people. Right. right. Well, when I was younger, when I was a kid, I told you before, I grew up like I was in a black neighborhood. By the time I was like eight, nine years old, I was in all white neighborhoods, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, white people, and yes, I'm generalizing, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, make that very clear. They do this thing where it's, it's like when you come to the South, it's the fake niceness, okay? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you know, have a good day, blah, blah, blah. Like, like, for example, grandma would be like, going to church, oh, that dress looks so pretty on you, right? But then you go, she goes home, she's like, you see what that bitch was wearing, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so yeah, exactly, right? So, <laughs> grandma, chill, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I seen you shopping for that same dress. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just petty right now. Right. So, I approach them that way because if I speak to them this way at first, mm-hmm. they ain't gonna hear me. Mm-hmm. They're gonna nod their head, pretend right. like they care, and then leave the room and not give a fuck and talk shit. Mm-hmm. So when I approach them aggressively, it pisses them off, it catches their attention, and then once they start doing the hey fuck you, I can have an intellectual conversation with them. Mm-hmm. That's how you reel right. them in. Mm-hmm. It's like going fishing. You gotta reel them in first. But if I talk like all quiet, the fish ain't gonna come. Mm-hmm. They ain't gonna come. Yeah. So it's a little, it's a little method. So yeah. Uh, I am impressed with this. <laughs> all right, I walked in like, I don't know what to expect. Uh, <laughs> I, I was sure. Yeah. All right, good. And be honest with me, be blunt. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, like, let me know. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's some bullshit. <laughs> so, question number one has okay. a two part. So okay. Now I'm going to ask you the second part. Okay. Um, um, oh, or do you want to? So, before she asks it, what uh-huh. would an ally be? Like, what does <laughs> being an ally mean to you? Okay, so an ally is. First off, don't get offended before black people get offended, right? That's like that white liberal shit, okay? The fake shit, right? Being an ally is not being offended all the time for them. Being an ally is knowing your white privilege. White privilege is not, people associate privilege with money, right? White privilege, that's money privilege. White privilege is being accepted in a white society and being able to do whatever you say you can or whatever you want or say right so for example i was homeless Mm -hmm. you take a black homeless man you take a white homeless man okay if i walk in a building homeless and looking all stinky and smelly and dirty right Mm -hmm. they ain't gonna accept me but all i had to do was get cleaned up shave a little bit put on some nice clothes I could walk in and they fully accept me, right? And just assume, my first time at the Grammys, I wasn't invited. They assumed I was was supposed to be there, right? Same thing at the Emmys, okay? (laughs) This is real talk, okay? Uh, You gotta run those elbows, okay? Now, and I got stories about Hollywood, but I don't wanna be, you know? So, 
<laughs> right? So um, that that's being an ally. You gotta be like, it's okay to use your white privilege. I use it every fucking day and every chance I get, right? Mm -hmm. But you got to use it for your black friends, your black families. Even if you don't got black friends and black family members in your life, right? Mm -hmm. Or Latinos or whoever the case may be, you need to speak on these issues. You need to be like educating, specifically educating your family your white friends, your white colleagues on these issues. I tell people all the time, I'm not the voice for black people. I'm not the spokesperson for black people. That's not my job. Anything that comes out of my mouth ain't nothing new to any black person, okay? My job is to educate white people. And that's what being a white ally is. If you're going home and your family saying some racist ass shit or some stereotypical shit, you need to ed first educate yourself and then educate them. That's being an ally because once you get rid of that dehumanization of black people, right, then we can start moving forward. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that answer is, but I, that's what I personally think. Yeah. All right. Good. It sums, it sums it up. <laughs> <laughs> it sums it up. All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, so we this one's going to ask you a question. Or is that oh, kind yeah. of the ask? Oh, no, no, I feel it. No, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, um, I like these pillows too because you can be comfortable. Like sometimes when you sit in the chair, like you don't know where to put your arms. Right? Yeah, 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 the exactly, pillows is exactly. like so comfortable. For the yeah. community that does not get the pillows, he just explained it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so with you having explained what you feel an ally is to mm -hmm. POCs, people of color, mm -hmm. um, we're gonna ask you this question. Okay. And. Don't, okay, I don't Hit want me. you to get offended. No, I won't. So, <laughs> I'm offended. I'm <laughs> so on our side, uh -huh. as people of color, mm -hmm. um, specifically black people, mm -hmm. white people have to prove just about everything to us. Yeah, as we should. Yeah, <laughs> okay. okay. Um, whether that be integrity, intentions, mm -hmm. even your character, majority yeah. of the time. Yeah. Um, so with that being, cons with that being said, if someone like me is able to look up and see that you were once an actor and you wanted to be a musician and you did these things mm -hmm. and then there was like a light switch moment yeah. assuming that those things were your first loves mm -hmm. how would you explain to someone who doesn't know you mm -hmm. um, and who doesn't find value in white allies why you're a good match for our community? Two reasons. Okay, one, I get hate from both sides, mm -hmm. right? And I get a lot of love from Black and Latino community, right? right? But there are the ones who don't want me doing this, right? We've seen you before, mm -hmm. and this is how we ended up here, mm -hmm. right? They have every fucking right to not trust me, mm -hmm. every right to not. Believe it, boy, that comes up my fucking mouth. Mm -hmm. Keep sleep with your eyes open, mm -hmm. right? I'm not mad at that, mm -hmm. okay? And I will go to the day I die to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. okay? Second, the only reason why I got into acting is because I was, when I was in school, and I went to school, in high school in the Philippines and China, okay? Mm -hmm. In America, it's about being cool, funny, and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Over there, it's about 4.0. Mm -hmm. Well, I wasn't getting no 4.0 over that, right? And I was a class clown. Mm -hmm. I wasn't gonna go to no good college. I wasn't gonna do anything. So by the time I got back to America, and I was working at Walmart and cutting trees down and everything, I was like, I'm sick of being in small town USA, mm -hmm. right? So I'm just gonna go to LA. And I was a good looking kid. I thought I could act, and I was like, this is my ticket, mm -hmm. okay? Then I realized, after years of doing that, it wasn't my lane. I didn't get along with male actors. I didn't like playing pretend. So for anybody who's like hesitant with me, good. I, want, I don't want anything less. Like, I should be on eggshells every fucking day, mm -hmm. right? Um, the moment I get comfortable is the moment either two things happen. One, 
I'm not who I say I am, and or the job's done, and racism is over. Okay, that's the only way to do it. So, for me to, I'll tell you, I'll tell you an example, right? Not to be extremely long-winded on this, right? But I think it's a very important issue. Yeah. Okay, when I was at the Black Lives Matter protest, mm -hmm. which I did get arrested the following week, mm -hmm. right? When I was there, I used my white privilege to push the cops forward, right? They wanted to steam get to the precinct, mm -hmm. okay? And I said, no, fuck that. Get the fuck out of the way. And they were, like, fully guarded, like, armored and guns and this and that. I'm like, I've had guns pointed at me by cops. Mm -hmm. You don't scare me. Get the fuck out of the way. Mm -hmm. March into the precinct in New Jersey, or Newark, New Jersey, okay? The first precinct, okay? When I was there... I was chanting, doing everything that I was supposed to be doing, right, to support, because I was pissed off too. Mm -hmm. Then black women would like get up there and speak. And you know how black women are, right? They they the leaders of the movement, right? Without black women, there wouldn't be certain presidents in office. Like we wouldn't have we wouldn't have had Trump in office again if it wasn't for black women, right? They got me to speak. When I spoke up there, people loved it but there was one black man who didn't like it mm -hmm. and he got mad at me and he pulled the microphone away from me he pulled everything away from me get the fuck out of here right I didn't get mad mm -hmm. I said you know what you're right it's not my zone the black women defended me so no he needs to be up front standing and marching with us we need every white ally possible I said no it's okay if he wants to be mad he has to be mad where he went wrong was he pushed me in the face and that's when I grabbed his arm and said, you don't fucking touch me, mm -hmm. right? I have no problem with you feeling the way you feel, right? But don't touch me, right? So that's to be expected. I've, I've watched everybody's, I read everybody's comments and I watch every videos and I see plenty of black people not liking to do what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad at them. But real me, until the day I die, I'm not here to um, appease anybody. I'm here to get one thing done. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I heard you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know we got intense in here. We got no, really no, intense. No, no, it needs to. We were listening. Okay, it needs good. To, it needs to. All right. Okay, so you're this far. My thing was like, this is the hill you die on, right? Education is the hill I die on. Yep. Right? You offer me $10 million, maybe I won't die. Mm. Right. So this is the hill that you're going to die on. Mm -hmm. um, you're educated, you're educated, you're educated. I believe we can educate so much to a black and blue. I, I, I'm an educator, so I believe education is what it's going to take. Right. But at some point, mm -hmm. um, you're at a platform that a lot of black people have also said the same thing you're saying, do something you're doing. We don't get that voice. We don't get that platform. We don't get to have these open spaces or systems to have, to have these conversations. Mm -hmm. Right. So looking... Um, as you go forward, do you have any? It's like, it's on the ground. I'm hungry too, don't worry. <laughs> um, as you see you taking off and evolving and going to mm. new things, um, I know some things, so y'all gotta be on the lookout. Right. I don't care if you say too much. But as you're evolving and going to these new areas, how are you? I'm gonna give you the floor to say how you're gonna evolve, and then I have. Either some, I don't know if you want to call it suggestions or questions on why or why not you might not be Yeah, no, you've been educating longer so, than me. So, so I'll, like, I'll let you say, see, how would you, how do you plan on evolving or going to the next level? And then I'll uh, give my team, because I don't want to display what you guys say. So here's the thing, right? When, like, this is me using my white privilege, right? Right? There is a lot of black people who speak on these issues, but they don't get the platform, mm -hmm. okay? Um, how I evolve is I I use this example. Okay, like where do you from like from this point of TikTok now? Mm -hmm. Where can you see yourself like go? Like, what's the next? So it's like, are you going to continue to educate, uh -huh. or is like, oh, I plan to do. Again, Here, I don't. I, I got some saying bonus. Well, see what you got saying now. <laughs> here's what I plan on doing, right? Because I can only preach for so long, right? There's only so many videos I can make, right? 
the goal is white people have been, and I made videos about this, right? Uh, white people have been basically taught this whitewashed narrative. Okay. Yeah, our tradition, you have a white narrative on TikTok. Yep. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is my thing, right? And I'm writing a book like called this. The White Narrative, right? Oh, God, I like this book real quick. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is why I'm an angry guy. Because when you, if a man lies to you, mm -hmm. first thing you do, you mad, right? But depending on the person, but typically you mad. Like, why'd you lie to me? You can't trust them, right? Oh, my gosh. My whole life, I was lied to with this white narrative, okay? So even white people who don't feel like they're racist, they've been dehumanized for so long. You hear the things in Ukraine, like, well, this is a white country. These are blonde and blue-eyed people. This is things that are ingrained in white people, okay? Whether you want to believe it or not, it's in there, okay? The next step is to, I'm going to be doing these live events, okay? Mm -hmm giving black people a platform to speak on these issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that smile. There we and go. then... Can you say anything that we would have asked you if you say it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask my questions. Right? Same thing I was giving uh, artists a platform to get their music heard. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the same thing with this. Mm -hmm. Okay? Second, I'm writing a book that will be, will be in every school system in the United States. Because I'm focusing on the United States first, because it's my country. Okay, mm -hmm. then I can spread it out. I'm writing a book that will be in every school system, in every, and I will make sure lawmakers, politicians, and everything make sure this book is in the school system. Because what they're doing right now with CRT and taking out Martin Luther King and everything, mm -hmm. you need to be learning about all that. But I think what white people need to be learning about even more is the white narrative. And the, how they brainwash you and make you think the way you think. Because your mind is a sponge to the age of seven. And you're soaking everything in. So what you learn by that age is how you're going to think for the rest of your life. Right? So that's the next step. Then we're going to take it to a whole other level. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, for, to answer your question, that's the next move. Okay. So those are my biggest concerns. Was to say, okay, he's educating. We see him has a platform. And a lot of times as a black woman um, or just a black person in general, we don't get that opportunity to have these same platforms, right? Mm -hmm. So when we see someone, it's like, are you willing to go, okay, I've made it, now let me back up, right? And let me mm -hmm. let black voices, yep. think, let me amplify black voices. Um, and say whether it's men or women, because there's a lot of women on there, so I don't know if you work with men or however that works, but just, mm -hmm. you know, amplifying black voices in general, as well as you mentioned your book. Mm -hmm. Right, so this book situation, <laughs> they are, it's called The White Narrative. Mm -hmm. um, and and by, by the way, to, not to cut you off, um, I challenge anyone, her name is Marcy, right? She's in my nonprofit. As much as I talk, right, and I'll educate on my end. If you want to get into the lion's den with a black voice, Marcy is not the one to mess with, right? Mm -hmm. She, she, like, my right wing woman right on this own product and she's gonna be right by my side on the on the platforms on the shows um on the stages and uh i'm scared of this woman <laughs> <laughs> that's why i would not i would not try to battle her yeah. so so yeah so she's the first one and she's gonna be the loudest one um but we're gonna bring everybody else on to speak mm -hmm. yeah okay. yeah it's always about like you said, white privilege using that white privilege, mm -hmm. and then also like how are you using it? Is it even making a difference? Yep. Because it makes you, it kind of like, it kind of makes you nervous when anyone, especially not of a black community, is speaking for black people. Because yep. it's like you can be an ally and still be damaged, right? Yep. Like imposter. Yep. So we kind of talked about this in terms of like war. Let's say we're fighting the war. We have white people to come on with us, or allies to come on with us, and they mm -hmm. get in the front. And it's like, hey, don't. But there still needs to be a black leader in the front. So Absolutely. I'm glad you're saying Marcy is back behind you because that means that you're not just going out here saying, this is what I think black people need to want me to say. Or like, yep. I think this is what people need to hear. Yep. As a black person saying, like, hey, this is what we need. Like, mm -hmm. someone may say, oh, black people, y'all need $5 billion for his supplies. And it's like, we didn't ask for that. Appreciate you, my Appreciate you. But we didn't ask for that. So yeah. sometimes people come out thinking they're here to help us when it's like, we're not asking this. Are you saying the same thing a black person has already said? What makes you different? 
Mm -hmm. um, so going to your book, The White Narrative, okay. it could be a little bit more that I don't know about. I know you don't want to share too much. People don't take it away. And yeah. I ain't trying to get that. But yeah. again, there are people who have written a lot of books that they've already kind of said, which I don't know what you're trying to say, so it could be different, mm -hmm. but pretty much have already kind of said these things. Yep. So have you thought of like even pushing these books? It's like, hey, these are great books to also include. You know what I mean? Because we have the white marriage. Which is actually a really good point because you can put at the end of the book of a list of those books. That's a really good idea of, of what else they should read. Like the front of the book. Oh. <laughs> or in the front of the book. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to make sure we get put. Well, you know, no, right. no, no, that's, that's, that's fair. From a political standpoint, if you want these books in the school system, in the mm -hmm. education system, right. there's always a roster of books. Absolutely. For children, right. for yeah. educators to choose from. Because it's, as an educator, when I see, if I see a lineup of books, again, I'm black, and I see the white narrative for white children, I'm going to say scratch it. Mm -hmm. I want all these black books, right? Because we've had the white narrative. All these years have been white narrative. Now, the wrong white narrative is mm -hmm. right? And so a lot of times that's what, again, I would have, but, you know, because of who I am, I'm going to obviously read the book and make sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. But, oh, okay, this isn't. I'll make sure you get a first copy. Right. Um, here, here's my and you too, right? right? Now, here, here's to answer your question, right? right? There's plenty of books out there written by black authors speaking on these issues, okay? Remember that story of that black boy who looked just like that that Disney character? Recently, and it went viral on social media with the, the, the so hair and everything. Yeah, that's representation. Okay, that the reason why that was so impactful, the reason why Black Panther was so impactful, is because you saw somebody like you in this um, empowering uh, stance, right? Representation. If you say, or if you say, or whoever says. What they're saying, Martin Luther King was called a race bearer. Over 75% of the people didn't like him. And now they pick and choose, just like they do the Bible, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What they want to hear from him, right? When you got somebody like me speaking on these issues, to directly to white people, not to black people, but directly to white people, mm -hmm. then they're like, oh, he looked like me. He grew up how I grew up. He's in the same environment. Maybe I need to fucking listen. Instead of going, oh, these black people are just making excuses, playing victim. Mm -hmm. Like all the fucking things you hear. Right. They're going, first I'm pissed off. I know how to speak to white people. I grew up with them. I know how they think, I know how they operate, how they move, how they walk, mm -hmm. right? So I know how to get their attention. I know how to piss them off and I know how to wake them up, right. okay? The white people that were spitting on black people in the 50s were still alive. And they take to their generation. I got white friends in, in Malibu, right? They're like, oh, racism is not, it's dead, blah, blah. Go to Texas. Go to New York, some parts of New York. Go to fucking Orange County, mm -hmm. right? It's very much alive, right? I have a, a friend from Venezuela, but he's dark as you, okay? And because Venezuela, you could be the light skin or dark, right? Mm -hmm. And he, when I met him in New York, he was like, oh, racism is bullshit, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And I would be educated on it, and he just still wouldn't believe me. Then he moved to Houston. Mm -hmm. That first week, mm -hmm. he'd been called an N word. He was speaking Spanish. They told him to go back to his country, get back out of America. Mm -hmm. And he called me, he's like, You were right. And I said, I told you. Mm -hmm. I fucking told you. Mm -hmm. So, there's a lot of people of color who don't believe it's a they believe it's a victim mentality and they believe that it's just it's this is bullshit. And there's a lot of, a lot of white people who also think that. But there's also a huge majority of white people who don't look at black people as humans. They look at them as people, but not humans. And they need to be re-educated. So that's that's why I think the book is very, very important. Now, I do like Putting those black authors and their books on the fucking front cover of that fucking shit. Like just even on the front, just like in a like a, you know. No, no, going like, front cover. Hey, come on, come on. Yeah. I remember you talking about like, oh, I'm gonna push my book at this. 
mm -hmm. um, event, right? So it's like, it would be so dope if you had, if you reached out to like, maybe there's a bunch of black artists as well, or it's like, I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. every single school. Mm -hmm. Great, but we also need again representation is important. Yep. So I also even like love it if maybe it was you and a black artist pushing. You know what I mean? Yep. Like at the same time, so it's like white people are also they're they're getting educated, but they're also getting both views. I think sometimes we don't mm -hmm. we only talk about like slavery or certain things. They need to. I can't even get my words together, but I feel, I feel like it needs to be. You know, I, know I, I, I get what you're saying, but here, here, here's <laughs> I get I get what you're saying, and here's 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 my response to it, right? I'll try to keep it short because I know I'm very very long winded, right? We don't got enough we ain't got enough tape, you know, in '90s baby when you say tape, but we don't got enough tape for like these long ass answers. But like, um, stepping stones, stepping stones. If you come too hard too fast. They ain't gonna listen, mm -hmm. right? You gotta ease them in, just like you. I got eased in, mm -hmm. right? If it wasn't for my dad, I wouldn't have got eased in. You would have came to me in two thousand fucking eleven, two thousand ten, and be like, "Oh, the Confederate flag is stupid." I'd be like, "Fuck you." Mm -hmm. So, when you say it was your dad, your catalyst? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Okay. One hundred fucking percent. Okay. Yeah. So you gotta ease in because if you showing a white book next to a black book and um then i feel like it's being pushed on me forced mm -hmm. just like how they feel about the vaccine mm -hmm. right when you ease in and you go hey by the way you should also read this book boom now you got a whole you open your mind you're going you know what i'm going to listen to this and it's not about getting everybody to change right it's about getting a good amount of them to change because then they're going to have kids and their kids and their kids. So, and then they're going to educate their family. Okay. And some of them too old to change anyway. But we're not worried about them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they about to be on the deathbed. So it's game over. So time is on our side. So that's why I think if you push the white book, and there could be different answers. And if you have a better response to that, I would like to hear it. But I think if we ease it in and just put your toes in the water before, besides you jump in, I think it's smarter. Yeah, um, I, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with the easing in. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my, that makes sense. I guess my point was coming from like the school I went to. Mm -hmm. We had one more white one, that's, right? Mm -hmm. So if they brought that book. I guess my thing was there's a lot of schools who aren't majority black. So in that sense, yes, it makes sense. I get it. Um, I guess my brain automatically went to me, kid, as well as me in the school that I taught at. It's like, I'm not reading this book to these black kids. <laughs> um, so I guess this is my my thought process again because mm -hmm. we have a dang history book written by a white man that's just false. I'm not saying this book is false, make sure you copy the book. Mm -hmm. um, so I do like the fact that like I'm writing this book, I wanted to go into education. Right, because I can't, I, I respect that because, again, I don't think I'm a mouthpiece. I don't know what you went through. I can't mm -hmm. speak to, um, thankfully, I have been blessed to where I have been around white people where I can't, where they're like, Jabril, speak to us. Is this right? Is this wrong? Right? Mm -hmm. And so they take what I say and be like, dang, but that's because I am willing to educate them. Like, people aren't willing to educate and be like, Google it. You can't tell me to Google nothing because I'm, I'm not. Like, mm -hmm. I, think, I think word to word is definitely more um, mm -hmm. yeah, meaningful than just uh, experience, live experience. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's great in that essence because I know my space. I know that um, that will open doors for me to have that platform to speak. But I also mm -hmm. know I'm not going to reach everyone because I don't know what it's like to be confederate and then not be confederate. Right, but I do mm -hmm. know what it's like to be ignorant on a certain topic. Mm -hmm. Coming out of that and to be like, whoa, nope. I was so ignorant. Let me speak on this. Let me educate you guys. Like, y'all know mm -hmm. this is wrong. So in that instance, I understand the book. I understand what you're doing. Um, kudos to you, Thank you. because mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, like I said, my my heels are down on this education. If someone slides me ten billion, is I'm not really dying. You know, mm -hmm. like, will I come off that hill? No. No. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> no she no. answered her own damn question. She's like, but. Go ahead. <laughs> we can see what I, I have. One quick comment. Okay. So, 
for me, you know me, and you're watching this, I have a very strong traditional background, and I feel like men should be the forefront. And I know mm -hmm. with the Black Lives Matter movement, it's mainly been us, because men are never being shut down. But there are men mm -hmm. who are trying to push the boundary and break that glass mm -hmm. in this arena that you're in. Mm -hmm. And so I think just a suggestion. Okay. <laughs> That's all we're doing here is suggesting. So this will be up to the PR team, the marketing team, the political, mm -hmm. everybody who's backing you uh -huh. to comb over with the white narrative. Mm -hmm. If you want this book to really succeed mm -hmm. in an educational standpoint, it needs to be paired just like this picture. It needs to be contrasted. It Explain needs, more. Okay. Um, so if you're going, for example, to a book signing, okay, and it's just you, mm -hmm. that's playing into the white narrative. Absolutely. Well. So yeah. if it's you and you're an ally to another black author mm -hmm. and you have them at this book signing, they should be signing their own book. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. They should be right next to you. It yeah. should be a partnership and not so much that's that's yep. the thing that also bothers me about allies it needs to be a partnership between the two mm -hmm. there there needs to be a bridge and if there's no bridge mm -hmm. then you're not going to cross over that river absolutely at all. so i just that's just no that's a fantastic <laughs> suggestion and like i never i never thought about either one of those ideas like mm -hmm. putting the books on there or anything mm -hmm. and nobody in my team thought about that either and this is why I have these conversations, right? Because the only reason why my mind became open is through conversation it wasn't through Google, right? And I grew up in high school and middle school where I could use Google, right? It was through life experience, right? So when you got, when I see my dad dating different races, right now he's married, happily married and everything, so I'm not gonna try. But like, um, but when you see that, and when you see him hanging out with black people, when you see him engaging with these people and having a good fucking time, you're just like, oh, well, I like my dad. Mm -hmm. My dad is like my hero, yeah. right? So now I automatically fuck with this other person, yeah. right? You need that. So people like me, and they see me fucking with this black man, or this black man fucks with me, that's and they like that black man, exactly. that's the bridge. Exactly. Yeah. So, so all I'm saying is just to further yourself mm -hmm. and other people of color who mm -hmm. are backing you, mm -hmm. it's better to have them by your side, Absolutely. in the forefront, in the media. With, so with it's just like a leading type situation is more of a yeah. department. Well, here's, here's the, I will say this. And I know you catch more flies with sugar water, but <laughs> we're in a climate, a political climate right now yeah. where you have to step on some toes. Absolutely. And... I will I'll say this, the, the writer, I, I call her Jay, mm -hmm. right? Um, I met her through my good friend Hala, um, and they've been in one of my videos, that party video on the rooftop in New York, right? Mm -hmm. Jay is my publicist, mm -hmm. okay? And I told her when we write this book, she's like, you're going to be on like the Daily Show and this, and I said, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. I said, you're going to be right there next with me, mm -hmm. and you can ask her, mm -hmm. well, I said, you're going to be in every interview, every stage, every show, it don't matter. You're going to be right by my side because you wrote this book. Mm -hmm. I basically, I'm a writer, mm -hmm. right? What I am, I'm a storyteller, okay? I'm a speaker, okay? I understand media, I understand attention, okay? But she's an amazing writer. Mm -hmm. So when it says writer, it's going to say J, co-writer, me, right. right? I'm not even the leader of my own book. Yeah. Okay, what I'm really focusing on is the fact that we need to push, mm -hmm. and as an ally, I need your experience, we need to push mm -hmm. our males in the POC communities to fight for us, just like you're fighting for us. So mm -hmm. with that being said, I know it's so much easier when you have black women backing you. Yeah. But you need that contrast. Absolutely. You need that contrast of having males on your team of color 
Okay. She tells you from a male perspective. Right. Mm -hmm. Because as a black Being woman, yeah. it's still going to be different. You feel yeah. Like yeah. 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 You need, you need that. If there's a yin and yang to everything. So you yep. need that balance for yep. sure. So just, I don't want to see you fail. Mm. Right. And in order to not fail, that partnership has to be established. Absolutely. So just, no, no, no. It's just, it's just dead. Totally I'm not, no, yeah, no, no, and if you got dead. any good recommendations, send them out of way. I would love to yeah. see you sit down and have a conversation with King Randall. I'm not sure if you're familiar with I am not. Him. Who he is, right. but he has the ex school for boys, and he's an amazing individual. Mm. And he's out there, and he, he's controversial, and yeah. he's pushing a narrative that black folks are not used to. Mm. And it's one of those things where it's like, are you a quote unquote pick me? And your community is looking at you like, are you a quote unquote pick me yep. for the black community? So mm -hmm. with that being said, you need a bridge mm -hmm. between the two so the entire world can see both of you for who you really are and what you're mm -hmm. really trying to do. Yeah. I'm gonna definitely yeah. uh I'm, I'm gonna give you I'll make sure you already have my well she already has my yeah, yeah, yeah. send me everything about it. I'm yeah, gonna do my sure. research. hundred sure. percent. So that that's a guarantee. So, <laughs> shout out to Any, Randall. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. There's no, and, 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 and you better be at my first book signing with me and King Randall. Oh, for sure. Uh, <laughs> like, it ain't for no sure. if you have a bus. I'll fly you half out. Yeah, we gotta make it happen. Sure. Yeah. Um, we have answered some yeah. really hard hitting questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we want to shout out one of our favorite black creators. It is wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is an individual wow. Um, on Instagram, we recently interviewed him. He is a black content creator um, and he's a digital artist. And he has this, um, if you don't know, we'll link, we'll link it below. But he yeah. has this series called Humans, where, and the humans is spelled H U E. So every every person in the story has a color, and that color is associated with the kind of Myers Briggs type, you know, thing. If you if you've never done, you know, your your INFJ or INSTP type mm -hmm. personality test, I would encourage you to do that. But mm -hmm. what he's done is he's taken an urban approach to the Myers Briggs. Okay. And so he's brought these incredible, just like relatable stories mm -hmm. <laughs> that you can lose yourself in mm -hmm. and made it so that people who don't understand the Myers Briggs, who don't understand the DSM, you know, five and things like that, can mm -hmm. take a look at their, themselves internally mm -hmm. and relate to certain characters and, and just kind of. Go on a spiritual journey. So, okay. with that being said, I know she mentioned mm -hmm, she <laughs> that she wanted you to look at individuals' color wheel. Uh -huh. All right. So he has chosen his color, mm -hmm. and now we are going to say first who we thought or who we think he is, mm -hmm. and then he's going to say who he thinks he is. Yeah. And we're going to leave the parent stuff for off camera. So. Well, not because, because I just don't have enough time to like, yeah, yeah, we're crunched for time. Yeah. And I honestly, if, if you want to know, maybe he'll make a video about it or, you know. I definitely will, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. So. Oh, <laughs> I thought we were going to say at the same time. You want to do his? Yeah. Okay, right, real quick. I'm oh, Sapphire I'm sorry. and she is. I'm purple. Purple, okay. Huh? So, on okay, Catherine, we're going to say what we think. We should all say at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wait, but I'm stuck between two. So, <laughs> like, you, okay, you go. Okay, ready? Ready? Okay. One. One, two, three, orange. <laughs> okay, Hold on, wait, what is orange? <laughs> <laughs> wait, okay. But it's funny because, like, that's the, for that's me, the now, level. I think that is service of, like, this is the, who we got to be. Yeah. So, service level. Okay. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I can like, relate to all those. <laughs> yeah, they ain't wrong. Interesting yeah. enough, mm -hmm. I was stuck between red, orange. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> see, see, that's bullshit. That's it's, a, no, it's only funny because that's what I chose for myself. Oh, because really? Like, she out of nowhere flew out of the house. Damn. Purple, I didn't have my match to make. Really that bad, huh? It was like purple. 
She went to the strongest, extroverted, most asshole. Damn. Okay. Calling her out. Okay. And or magnetic. Magenta. Oh, magenta. Okay. So that's See, what that's I thought it was first. I chose magenta. Magenta. And then I went to the second page and was like. Nah. Ooh, I can see yeah. orange. So those are my two. It was either orange or magenta. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was okay. We're close. Okay, we're close. okay. We're pretty close. We're pretty pretty close. close. I mean, I, now that I look at orange, you like I, I see it too. Right. Absolutely. Because like the other ones included, like red orange uh, included future minded. Uh, like I like the outspoken one. Mm -hmm. Like like all these like match up. It was just where I was getting stuck was like, shit, I'm charming. Like, <laughs> like, 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 100%, right? So I'm like, am I just gonna let that one go? Like, you know? So. Be honest with yourself. Yeah. Uh -huh. An individual will tell you himself that these are not boxed. These are yeah. not boxed in. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're specifically for his characters, of course, but when you're doing it for yourself, you can, you can be mm -hmm. wonderful. Now, that's that's yeah. so dope because, again, I really you might present. For example, when I'm out with people, I present yellow, which mm. is danger orange, right? Because I'm <laughs> just a little orange. Yeah. Uh, but like funny, char you know, charismatic, mm -hmm. things like that, I present orange. But if you go mm. surface level into really who I am, I'm oh, sapphire, which is I'm more of an introvert. So I'm like, I'm maybe 58% introvert. Oh, okay. Last year I was like, I was introvert. So like, you know, it's obviously it changes based on seasons and next mm -hmm. week you might come back and be like, oh, I'm definitely honey. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's so cool that it's really good. We, we gotta evolve, we gotta change. Yeah, so. yeah for sure. And mm -hmm. I encourage you to go look at the series. Um, there's, no, there's no audio, but mm -hmm. it's a really easy read. Yeah, um, he said that himself. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's it's just it, you, you will find yourself like, oh, where's the rest of it? You know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he does have a Patreon, so we okay. encourage everybody to go support his people. Oh. <laughs> right. All right. Okay, so now we have to get the uh, spicy question out. Uh, so the world wants to know. She wants to know. Let <laughs> me uh, get right here. Let me get right here. I don't know how spicy I want to go with this. Nah, I go. I want full yeah. spice. So, okay, okay I got uh, <laughs> So, uh, um, let's be honest. Are you single? You're taking what you're doing. You need my number was supposed to be. Hey, shoot your shot. Yeah, what was that? Yeah. I, I am single. Uh, yeah, I'm not married. Not married. Um, now, not dating. Everyone knows that you're single. <laughs> everybody who's That's ever been on my life knows I'm single. Okay, there's nobody who like know every day. He's like, no, I'm single. Okay. Yeah, everybody knows I'm single. So I'm talking to one girl in Harlem. She cool. Okay. Um, even though she got a lot of hate from my followers on live, okay. but whatever. <laughs> um, she's dope. Um, but yeah. Okay. Single. He's single. He's talking to someone. Mm -hmm. Y'all better get in where y'all fit in. Thanks. If you gonna get in. Uh -huh. But I ain't yeah. looking to fuck around. I'm looking for a queen. So. Hey. Boom. Did the queen go to skin tone? <laughs> 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 I know. I know. Some of my quick. Okay, my recent. Some of my. I know it's coming. I was like, she's gonna come out. It was a comment that was like, man, you just at black girls. That's why. And I was like. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. That's a wild question, but it's a shoot. We, <laughs> no, we, gotta, we got, we got, it got too hot in here. You know, like, shit. Um, nah, like I, like I've dated white girls, I've dated Latina, I've dated black, I've dated Asian. I, I prefer Latina and black. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. yeah. yeah, I gotta have some spice. I gotta have like, I gotta have the flavor. They, okay. they, well, they change, so like they're blue, but uh, depending on my mood or the weather or what I'm wearing, like it's either blue, gray, yellow, and green. We're gonna put that on his head. He has one. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that's gonna be like he likes robots on the beach. Yeah, the whole personality since eyes changed by that. Like, uh -huh. He's an orange, like, yeah. he's an orange, but he's also a magenta, so he's very soft. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. soft when I can be. Yeah, but not for long. This is a pooch. This is a buzz. But you know what? Shoot your shot. I ain't mad at it. Right. Who knows? Maybe we, I'm, I'm here till 9 o'clock, so you know. <laughs> 
Just saying. Let the people know mm -hmm. where can they find you? What's coming up? What's the next thing? Okay, yeah. So everybody knows at this point, all my socials are Eric Brandstone. Uh, TikTok's the Eric Brandstone because my first one got taken down. We're little shit. Mm -hmm. But like, um, <laughs> uh, uh, what's coming next is um, writing this book with Jay called The White Narrative. And then we're going to be doing an event at the Apollo Theater in Harlem, October 8th. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely locked in. The date might change. Okay. I've already talked to the Apollo about it. Um, then we're going to be doing an after party and an exclusive rooftop party in New York City the day after. That's um, dope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jay, I'll give you a backstory exclusive because you don't get a private ticket. <laughs> oh, damn right. Damn fucking right. You come in, if you ain't getting there, like, <laughs> there's going to be a problem. Yeah. We're going to try to be there. We're going to try to be there. I don't want to hear the word. I can't. I don't know what the word try is. Like, We're uh -huh. going to be there. Boom. Because the Eric... Brian Stone is going to pay for it. <laughs> 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 you ain't yeah. on camera, you know. Mm -hmm. Shout out to his Yes. They're going to cut that in so many different ways to get out of context. That's yeah, you, you are but, watching this. Help. Mm. <laughs> Help him. <laughs> Um, closer than October? Any protests? I'm, I'm, I'm looking to, we definitely going to do a protest at the Lovelace restaurant. So if you've seen my videos, you know what that's about, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and thank you for everybody leaving a bad review on that restaurant because we get, they ain't taking responsibility for what happened and we're going to make sure they take responsibility. Mm -hmm. Um, besides that, um, like I'm very strategic on the moves, right? I'm playing chestnut checkers. So I think the first thing I want to do is the Harlem show. Okay. Um, not only I think it's the right place to do it, um, they help out nonprofits. So if you're a nonprofit, they give a 50% discount anyway uh, to rent it out. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I, I don't think it's going to be right to do anything before then unless something pops up. Because if it pops up, we pop in. But like, um yeah i'd say just blow the the following up till then okay. and then take it to the next level and after that then we're gonna do more shit. Mm -hmm. so his yeah. platforms are tiktok instagram what else you got those are your main uh, yeah those are my main two okay. um i don't really post on instagram anymore facebook shout out to everybody on facebook they're okay. they, the original ogs who supported me um yeah <laughs> right and then um snapchat all the all the same thing twitter i'm gonna start using twitter more okay. so yeah just you got a link up. tree or uh no, no. You get a i just i have a i have a just on my bio is airbrinestone.com and it has all my information there right. so everything will be down in the description box below so that you can have easy access i'll make sure to link everything um again we just want to Thank you for no. Thank you. Right. Wait, what? Well, I think I was not right. What was going on? I was like, I didn't thank you. And then like, no. Um, we just really want to thank you for sharing with us. This yeah. was a great jam episode, guys. Yeah. Amazing. Excellent. Probably this and individual interview. I, I know. I say this almost every video. Every video because we're constantly topping ourselves, and as black women, kudos to us because. Uh -huh. I never know if we're going to top ourselves, but right. we do. Mm. And, and kudos to you, and mm. thank you once again for being on the show. But see, now I'm competitive, so I want that top spot. <laughs> 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 well, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. All right, all right, all right. Cool, cool, cool. cool. <laughs> Come back after that. Oh, I got you. 100%. 100%. I'll bring you to the Apollo and everything. So, um, yeah, thank you for having me on. You girls are amazing. And, uh, you know, you guys... Follow these girls, hundred percent. Follow them. Mm -hmm. uh, our stuff will be in the description box below. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Jam with us. Boom. Peace. Peace. <laughs>